Hi guys, Todd here. It's Typhoon time and we're going to be looking at the Typhoon GT1. Now this is this is a quite a, a cheap RTA from Smoker Store. Now when I say cheap, it's probably the cheapest tank they've ever done, which it comes in under 100 euros. I think it's 99 euros. And uh, yes, for those guys, it's uh, new territory for them. This is, uh, I'll, I'll get the bullshit and the banter out of the way. So you had the GTR and whatnot. Well, this is looks very similar to me. And in some respects, it is similar but it's also simplified and that's probably why it's cheaper but does it give a good vape is it easy to build on and uh, all that other stuff we shall cover as we go along now it's going to hold 4.3 milliliters of juice and uh, for that you have to fill it from we'll start off with this the bottom yeah you have to take the tank off fill from here there is no top fill on this tank at all we have the i think it's the gtr drip tip pretty much the same bore on this is about i think it's about 4.3 and the bore on the chimney is not far off 3.8 you can unscrew this and uh, it takes a light touch remember if you squeeze it then because this is a psu tank you know you don't want to if you squeeze it you're just screwing up the threads basically so it's always a light touch and you see you've got an o-ring there and yeah check out inside there there's it's this is actually the main thing that I can see that changed from the other pre-production one that I had and it, it does actually give quite a different vape uh, the throat hit on this one is not nearly as strong as the previous one they sent me and I, I think this is going to suit a lot more people this piece does come off of here and there you go you can see you've got your PSU tank I think there will be a 2 mil tank or a 2 mil variant as well uh, I, I'm not 100% sure but I think Creme de Vape in the UK will be getting these uh, and whether or not they do the 2 2 mil TPD version but also sell the 4.3 you'll have to keep an eye on their store but anyway we'll just pop that back on there like that only thing is that I do find that this will depending on how you tighten that down sometimes this tank will slide around here just make sure you've got it nipped up far enough and it'll stay all in one place now it is a 23 millimeter diameter tank but uh, these knurled sections here it takes out to about 23.3 23.4 so depending on the mod you have if it's a strict 23 millimeters then you may struggle getting this to fit because you have that extra little knurled bit taking it out further overall height is about 41.5 or thereabouts on the base we have the the made in germany we have our 510 which is much the same as the 510 that was on the gtr it does look yeah you would probably think oh i'm not going to put this on a mechanical mod or anything like that i've actually been using it in mechanical mods with no issue we do have uh if we go around here we have a gt1 here and uh, you can see we also have a couple of air holes here uh this one here is about 2.3 and uh and I can't remember what size this one is. You need a tiny little Allen key, which you get with it. You can take that out as well. Uh, but both these ports feed into the same air hole. And in my humble opinion, uh, I find that most of the airflow is controlled by the pin underneath the coil anyway. So I, I honestly, I, I just kind of leave it like this all the time. But if you wanted to, you could unscrew this little one as well. Taking the deck off, obviously you've got stainless steel going into PSU. Uh, some people don't mind this, some people don't like it uh, because there's always the chance of a cross thread and damaging the tank. Just be very, very careful. PSU is uh, will handle most juices. Uh, they do say, or some say, that will handle all tank crackers. I don't necessarily agree with that, uh, but um, yes, if you're going to use a tank cracking juice at the end of the day you want glass or you want stainless steel uh, if you're running a plastic tank of any description there is always the chance that you could end up you know cracking it i should point out that you do actually get a little coil with this and you get a couple of allen keys and some spare o-rings uh, the allen keys will work for here and here for the posts and will also operate this little allen 
grubby screw thing here is grubby screw. Oh my God, this piece here as well. Uh, but uh, you don't have uh, an Allen key for the 510 at the bottom. That's one thing that's not included. But I have my Allen key here. This is the size that I'm using. There we go. And that's what I'm going to use to take out this 510 pin because I just want to show you how this airflow works and how everything goes together. So we'll take this out of here. That's that lost. Then got another pointy tool and I'm just going to push. There we go. Here comes our positive block. That's going to come out like that. So there you go. There's your positive block. And there is, hopefully you can see down the bottom there. Can you now see where the air is coming in? The air. So the air's coming in these two holes here, or one hole, depending on what you got, and just comes straight into this chamber at the bottom. Uh, and they will then travel up through this air hole at the back here. One screw for the 510 pin, and the other little one is just a locating. Uh, it's got a little raised section down the bottom there, so that's all there for there. But the air does come through here and travels up here. Now it comes with a 1.2mm air pin and I'll just pull that out there just now and you can see how big the air is. So this is only ever going to be mouth to lung or I think you can get a 1.8mm uh, pin for it as well. Pretty sure I've got it here than I've used it but you can see here you're never going to get you know masses of air through this thing. You might get a tight restricted direct lung if you're lucky, but uh, we'll pop this back in here just now because I'm just going to do a build with this pin. Pop this back in, I'll screw it back together and then we'll have a look at the deck. So we've got uh, two posts here, uh, two juice wells, juice comes through here, there is no juice flow control, no juice flow control at all, which is, I don't mind because quite frankly on the, the GTR I thought it was I really didn't like it. I really didn't like it. It was one of the things that ruined the tank for me was trying to line up these stupid juice flow holes. These are always open. Uh, so yeah, there's a thing that I like straight away. Putting a coil in couldn't be easier. You will get a, you'll get a complex coil in there. You, you get pretty much anything. But remember, this is probably primarily a, a mouth to lung type device or a very tight restricted direct lung. Now I am going to use these coils that uh, they sent on. In fact, I've used these a few times now and they're not half bad. Just gonna break the excess wire off here. Coiling rod back out. That's where my coil is living. I'll, I'll scoot it over a little bit and make sure it's directly above that air hole. Now here's the next thing. Uh, now obviously the air pins, uh, you have to remove the build if you want to change the air pins out. Uh, I will say that now whilst you have huge juice wells here, um, be very, very careful uh, because, you know, the, you may want to fill these out with lots of cotton because they're such big juice holes, uh, but uh, this is a more a mouth to lung type device. And what I was finding is that uh, when at first I started filling this with cotton, putting lots of cotton in here, the, the cotton was resting against you know, just in, against where the, the air pin is there. And I was finding that moisture was actually traveling um, up here and going into the air pin. Uh, so now I kind of, I, I just make sure my cotton's coming straight out and just fold it down um, rather than filling the entire well with cotton. So even with my cotton in there just now, I folded it down, I'm going in and I'm just making sure that I'm pulling the cotton away from that air pin. I just don't want to risk getting any moisture into that air pin. Uh, and also, please, please, please make sure that your air pin is firmly seated in. If it's not firmly seated in, then you will get moisture traveling down through there as well. I will say this will wick uh, a heavy VG and I've used it with a 50-50 as well. Uh, just with the 50-50, uh, I found you really have to make sure that you've got the cotton almost kind of like pushed right up against these wick holes here because obviously it's going to wick a lot faster with the, the thinner liquid. Yes, it's a bottom fill and yes, you have you take your time because you've only got a certain gap between, you know, here and here to get your juice in. And then screw the two together, make sure it's not cross-threaded, this is not good. I'm going to pop it onto this uh, Cthulhu uh, MOSFET mod that I've been testing because it makes for a, a really nice uh, match. Uh, 
So there we go. There's the Typhoon GT1. So there you go, the GT1. Uh, now, once again, it comes with a 1.2 mil air pin, and there is a 0 0.8, there's a 1, a 1.5, a 1.8. There, there's other air pins available. You have to buy them, and I think, yeah, they're about six euros per pin. Uh, but um, yes. Right, the short and sweet version is that for me this is a, 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 a simpler version of the GTR uh, build quality wise and whatnot, considering it's much cheaper. Uh, still 99 euros, but it's much cheaper than the other one. Um, it doesn't feel any different. It doesn't feel like it's less a lesser quality or anything like that. So that's fine by me. I, I have no issues with the bottom fill. Um, that's me personally. I, I know a lot of people don't like bottom fill tanks, so that's um, that's down to the individual. You know, putting a build in is super, super easy on this thing. Uh, no issues there. You can use really thin wire or you can use do more complex coils with a slightly thicker wire. They all fit in. Obviously with the air pins, you have to remove the build if you want to change the air pin. But for me, this is primarily a mouth to lung, even with the 1.8. It, it goes into a, a tighter restricted direct lung, uh, but uh, I think this works best as a mouth to lung tank. Um, the vape quality from it is it's not half bad. It's actually very good. The flavour comes through. Now, it, they do say this is, I, I get the impression and from talking to a certain gentleman that this was primarily aimed at um, net vapours and tobacco vapours and whatnot. Now, I've tried my custards and I've tried fruit flavours in here. I don't do nets or tobaccos, so I, I can't give you an opinion on that. But for fruits and dessert flavours, I'm still getting excellent flavour from it. So... Yeah, and it actually, the previous version I had that you know it was slightly different, and and it and it was a, a harder throat hit from it, and it wasn't just didn't work quite as well for me as this one does. Um, anyway, let's have a vape. Stop talking, just vape. One point two. Um, I'm I'm still getting a good throat hit from that, uh, and trust me, as, as as you lift the coil up, you will get more of a throat hit. But get the coil straight down, and yeah, it's not half bad. Um, so build quality, no issues. Um, obviously, the pin you have to change it out, change the build out. You know about that. Uh, it's a good RTA. Uh, I I'm not. <laughs> you have to excuse me. There's a hole in the positive block where air travels into. They've got this two holes on the outside. Um, for me, uh, it just it doesn't make any difference. I just leave one of them blocked off all the time. I've tried it with and without that blocked off, and and it doesn't make to me uh, much of any difference at all. You might get different mileage out of it, but um, I can only tell you what I find. Uh, what else can I tell you about this thing? <sighs> right, full transparency. Um, my 0 0.8, um, whilst it gives, and I will say this, a 0 0.8 gives a 0 0.8 draw. One mil gives a one mil draw and so on and so forth. It is the kind of draw that you would expect for that size of pin. They nailed it. They really did. Uh, my 0.8mm pin wasn't fitting quite perfectly. Now it came with a, a prototype version, a pre-production version, so it might have been just because it was out of, out of spec slightly. So, uh, but I have to be honest. Uh, so what was happening with me was that I was getting moisture, was travelling down past the O-ring, so it was giving me, I was getting whistling and gurgling because of that. Now, all the other pins I've tried, because uh, they sent them all on, have worked flawlessly. However, I have to make sure that I don't, you've got those big juice wells and, and 
don't just fill it full of cotton and especially for me make sure that that cotton is not up against the air pin or the positive block in the center because I was just finding that you know as the cotton got saturated then I was getting juice going down the pinhole and once moisture was getting inside here it was just bouncing about and it was giving me that bloody annoying noise um, right now perfect no noise at all but I still occasionally depending on how I draw if I overdraw uh, if I take too much of a an inhale for the size of pin I do find myself still getting a little bit of moisture coming down that air pin and bouncing about and I have to blow it out to clear it now that's annoying for me because if, if you're well you'll all know what that sounds like and you'll come across it it's the only con and I've tried so many different builds I've tried the o-rings swapping the o-rings out on the pins but for me I really do believe it's because I'm getting the cotton I have to make sure the cotton comes out and down not just straight out from the coil and then a big thick wad um, and I'll stop because I'm probably making no sense whatsoever and um, yes Eek. but that that's the only con I've come across and it's it doesn't happen all the time it doesn't happen all the time it's more after um, you know as cotton drops you know as you've been vaping lo a long time with it uh, that's when it kinds to kick in uh, so overall it's not a bad tank and it's nice to see them bringing one in just under the 100 euro mark and you know it increases their audience and so on and so forth and yeah that's it it's still a very very pretty looking tank and um, should be available in the UK as well as always if you disagree if you think I've missed something or you know something that I don't then please put it in the comments below this video because uh, yeah it helps other people out that may be looking at buying this but uh, thank you to Oliver uh, for sending this on from Smoker Store as always great help buddy and thank you to you guys for watching and until next time, bye for now.